my surgeries that I still have to go are, um, I was an open book pelvic break, so my pelvis was literally snapped into two pieces. And because of that, whenever there's a severe open book break or any sort of severe bone break, we um, can develop osteocalcification. And I developed um, one on the size of my hip, about the size of a small baby's fist. So it really hinders my mobility, and it also tweaks my gait quite a bit. So that's gonna need to get removed. And then all the new skin that I've grown, which is several feet between my abdomen, my hips, and my legs, um, doesn't have pores in it anymore. So I never needed skin grafts, which is wonderful. Um, Gaylord has exceptional wound care, and I was incredibly honored to be here and be with some of the best. So um, I never developed staph infections. I never you know, got sick, and my skin healed really, really well, but it doesn't have pores in it. So when my skin gets really hot, it has a tendency of tearing and developing fissures. And then um, it's also more prone towards cancers and things like that, and it's very tight. My leg is sort of like a, a wooden leg. So they're gonna put expanders in my leg, my stomach, and my hips, and then pull the skin up and over so that the skin's a lot more pliable like my other leg, and I'll have a lot more mobility. And then my glutes were ripped. Um, so. One of the other surgeries we have to do, my left glute doesn't fully fire because everything was pulled off the sacrum. So um, we have to do some re-anchoring of one of my, uh, the left backside of my glute. So those are the surgeries we have yet to come. I, I opted for nothing really cosmetically as far as looking because quite honestly, my body just looks like I got run over by a freight truck naked when I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, it is what it is, right? And so um, we just kind of joke that at least my face didn't get crushed. <laughs> so I'm not doing cosmetic surgery. <laughs> Every time I meet new um, former Gaylord patients, it feels like once you're a Gaylord patient, it kind of gets stuck in your blood and you're forever just so grateful for this place. Um, I've had 22 surgeries so far. I've got about six more to go. But um, the great thing that has really empowered me through this entire process is that I don't look at myself as a victim of a horrible trauma as much as I look at myself as a survivor. And that is something that was bestowed upon me from my medical care here. I was never pitied. Um, I would cry, I would sob, I wouldn't want to get out of bed. Um, sometimes I would just hit my call bell and they'd come in and say, what do you need? And I'd say, a hug. All I need is a hug. Um, and they would give me that hug, but then they would also say, so what's your goal for today? What are we going to do for today? And sometimes I look at them sort of pissed off and say, well, I can't get out of bed. Um, <laughs> I can't keep food down. I'm stuck to a telemetry unit, so what is my goal for today? And they'd say, well, maybe your goal for today is to make it through the day, to make it through your wound care, and then for the sun to come up the next day. And so slowly my goals started changing, and I went from making it through the day, making it through those four to six hours of wound care a day, and keeping food down, to finally standing and walking across my room, and then walking across the entire physical therapy um, that huge room in there and the huge gym um, and then taking steps and then going outside you know and before we knew it this pelvis started moving and um, I wasn't bleeding as much and my wounds were under control and I said I want to go home by Christmas and they said I don't know you know you still have about 40 percent of your body that's open wounds um, that's a lot and I said I don't care like please help me get home for Christmas I haven't even been married for two years like I just want to get home I want to be with my family and they made that happen. So um, originally it was thought that I was going to be here for several months, and I was, I was home the week of Christmas. And so, so finding what inspires you and using that towards just you know, going out and being individuals but working together. So since this trauma, um, my mentality and what I do is really quite similar. It's just taken a different vein. Um, I had over 78 units of blood, and the reason I kept flatlining is because my heart literally was, didn't have anything to, to beat anymore. So I'm the product of a lot of heroes now, and um, I, I find it so beautiful that 
blood knows no color race. It knows no gender. It knows no um, religion. And so in the work that I did before, which was a lot of trying to break down barriers within communities and help um, impassion people, now that my heart has literally beat um, between the platelets and plasma, closer to 200 donors that I'll never know. Um, it's just really powerful to think that, um, you know, my heart doesn't know any different, right? And so we all have this beautiful potential of being a hero and being each other's heroes.